If there's one element of the modern gaming landscape that I could do without, it's games as a service. I totally get the appeal of a great game being added to over time, I mean, I absolutely adore Monster Hunter World after all, but most live service games release in a state that you could easily call unfinished. Unsurprisingly, Marvel's Avengers is the latest in a long line of half-baked, full-priced games that promise to grow and improve over time, and like the glorified early access games that came before it, it has plenty of rough edges, bugs, and content issues to discourage early adoption. But it isn't all bad, and the things that the game does well have me hopeful for its future, albeit cautiously hopeful. Marvel's Avengers takes place five years after A-Day, an event that leveled the city of San Francisco, left a large portion of the population, now called Inhumans, dealing with uncontrollable superpowers, and resulted in the disbandment of the Avengers themselves. It predominantly follows Kamala Khan, an Avengers superfan and newly empowered Inhuman, as she attempts to reassemble the Avengers and uncover the truth regarding a proposed Inhuman cure. For anyone with a passing familiarity with the comics that these characters and groups come from, the plot of Avengers won't be anything particularly surprising. With that said, viewing these characters through the lens of Kamala Khan is a unique take, and seeing these heroes brought low and scattered was genuinely pretty compelling. I think a lot of what makes this story work are the quality performances that breathe life into the main characters. In particular, Kamala and her father are incredibly lovable, and their relationship provides the majority of the game's emotional core. That's not to say that the rest of the cast don't pull their weight, because they're genuinely great, almost across the board. It's more that these interpretations of the Avengers are pretty much what you've come to expect from these characters. For instance, Travis Willingham's Thor is loud and boisterous, while Troy Baker's Bruce Banner is soft-spoken and contemplative. The one exception here is Tony Stark as played by Nolan North, and even then, my issue is more with how he's written as a high-energy comedian rather than with North's actual performance. The solid voice work of Marvel's Avengers is backed up by some really detailed animations during cutscenes, but the visual quality of the game overall is a little hit or miss. At its best, the game has some great character designs, impactful combat animations, and varied environments, but more often than not, Avengers is not at its best. Enemy designs leave a little something to be desired, and in-game cutscenes have flat animations that lack personality, but on the more technical side, the game is also plagued by slow loading textures that take away from the detailed characters, and on the audio side of things, it's not uncommon for the game to have dialogue missing from certain in-game cutscenes. Avengers' rough technical edges don't stop there either. Specifically, the game's frame rate suffers whenever there's a lot going on, and with the game focusing on multiple characters with massive, effect-heavy attacks and powers, that's something that happens a lot. Beyond rampant frame dropping, though, the game's liberal use of screen shake and other various UI effects can make the action a little hard to follow as well. But in spite of all these flaws, I would be lying if I said I didn't find the core gameplay loop super enjoyable, and although it doesn't bring a lot of new ideas to the table, it has a surprising amount of mechanical depth and variety. On the surface, Marvel's Avengers is a serviceable action game with a focus on group combat, and each of the game's six playable characters has access to a similar suite of melee, ranged, and special skills, so it's easy enough to swap between them once you've wrapped your head around the basics. In general, the combat is fast-paced and satisfying, and due to each character's extensive skill trees, there's plenty of new combos and skills to learn as you progress through the game's 10-hour-long main campaign. Each character has light and heavy attacks, a jump, and a dodge, as well as your standard area-clearing abilities for when you're in trouble. But where Avengers gets really interesting is in how each character manages to feel unique, even though they tend to share inputs and broad mechanics. For instance, even though each character has an intrinsic ability, mapped to the right trigger, how you build that meter and how you use it varies from character to character. In the case of Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, and Ms. Marvel, their intrinsic power builds over time, while Black Widow and Hulk build theirs up by attacking either quickly or repeatedly, respectively. Once you've built up the meter, each character uses it in their own special way as well. Most characters receive a damage boost in addition to a more unique element, like Hulk's ability to recover health with each attack or Ms. Marvel's extended range on her standard attacks, but this isn't always the case. Captain America, for example, can straight up block most, if not all, attacks, and can even reflect incoming projectiles. Meanwhile, all of Iron Man's projectiles depend on that intrinsic energy, probably because they're the most powerful ranged options in the game, at least at the outset. On that note, the characters are set apart from one another in terms of their ranged options as well. As I mentioned, Iron Man has some of the strongest ranged attacks in the game, and a lot of that is due to the sheer variety on hand, from chargeable repulsor blasts to homing missiles. But Stark isn't the only one with long-range firepower on his side. Black Widow has a similar variety of guns at her disposal, Ms. Marvel can punch and grab distant enemies with her frankly upsettingly giant hands, and hell, even the Hulk can tear chunks of cement out of the ground to hurl at people. But my favorites have got to be Captain America's shield, which can rebound between designated targets, and Thor's hammer, which can hilariously carry enemies off and pin them to walls. 
While these long range elements are all functionally similar in that they each use the triggers to aim and attack, they're all surprisingly customizable and like the intrinsic ability, the stuff that really gets me excited about Marvel's Avengers are the little things. Since Marvel's Avengers has undoubtedly been built with cooperative multiplayer in mind first and foremost, it feels like the characters have been standardized somewhat to encourage people to use the entire available roster. After all, who would pick the less powerful Black Widow or Captain America if you could just explode dudes with the Hulk or Thor? With that in mind, it is nice to see that the characters do have meaningful differences, especially since these differences are usually meant to encourage a certain playstyle. For example, Hulk's intrinsic rage letting him regain health as he attacks is supposed to get you into the fray and attacking with wild abandon, while Black Widow's lower health and special moves that cause her to lose enemy aggro encourage a more hit and run style of play. Though it may seem like the playing field is leveled between the Avengers on hand, after playing with each you do find that not all heroes are suited to every aspect of play. With that said, even though the game encourages you to play characters in certain ways, you are free to build your Avengers in a way that suits you. Not only can you unlock skills in an order that fits your playstyle, most of a character's specials and their intrinsic abilities can be upgraded and modified even further. Sometimes this can yield health boosts while performing certain moves, while other upgrades can change a character's moveset to fit a more support-like role when playing with friends. This customization extends to the loot system as well, where individual pieces not only improve elements such as your melee, defense, or ranged capabilities, but can also add modifiers to the damage you deal or increase the odds of your character receiving health or special meter from certain actions. Now, if I'm being honest, this isn't the most compelling loot system I've seen, as there's no cosmetic element to the loot you collect, but it does enough to trigger the sense of reward that comes with seeing a number go up, so that's something, I guess. My main issue with the loot system, and specifically the lack of cosmetic elements which make it inherently less engaging to me on a personal level, is that I'm almost certain the game was made this way so that Square Enix could sell you skins for an outrageous price. There are cosmetics that you can unlock in the game, and they're fine for the most part, but from what I can tell, the most appealing costumes aren't actually available for purchase with Avengers in-game currency called Units. Instead, most of the interesting outfits are only available using the game's premium currency, called Credits, just to make things as confusing as possible. And these are all but impossible to earn through gameplay. After a full playthrough of the game's main campaign, I've not even earned enough to purchase one of the cheaper premium outfits, and when converting credits to real-world money, the prices of these are absolutely obscene. To buy one of the high-tier skins, for example, it would cost you roughly 20 Australian dollars. But of course you can't just buy the amount of currency you need, you have to buy them in packs, so you have more left over. So you feel like you need to play more until you can spend them and not have that further monetary investment sitting in the game. Frankly, it's disgusting, and Square Enix should be absolutely ashamed of themselves, as should the other handful of studios who allowed this predatory monetization into the game they made. And what's worse, if you're one of the poor suckers that the game has worn down and conned into paying for these costumes, there's a good chance that the game will bug out and relock the cosmetics you've already unlocked. Now, I haven't personally paid for anything in the game's premium store, but I have had progression-based outfits go missing five or six times now, which is just unacceptable. On top of that bug, there are a number of weird visual glitches that completely knocked me out of the experience, even more so than Avengers' regular framerate issues did. I'm talking about visual effects remaining on screen long after they should have ended, characters melting into the floor or walking at odd angles, or even multiple models showing up on screen when you try to take a look at your recently relocked costumes. Really, the fact that the game has only crashed on me once is the most surprising part about this game's seemingly endless, baffling technical shortcomings. And all of this is a damn shame too, because when it works, Marvel's Avengers is a super fun time, whether you're on your own or with other players. Admittedly, the AI companions don't complete objectives or focus on actual threats as well as real people would, so the game's multiplayer would be your best bet. Thankfully, I didn't actually have any issues with Avengers online elements, aside from fairly long matchmaking times, and in spite of all the issues I do have with the game, I'm excited to play more of it with friends. The mission types don't offer a ton of objective variety, usually asking you to go and occupy certain areas or simply wiping out waves of enemies, but as a vehicle for gameplay that I found genuinely entertaining, Marvel's Avengers could do a lot worse. However, I have to say that the game's most enjoyable sequences were the ones that made you play as particular characters in stages tailor-made for them and their abilities, rather than the open sandboxes that work with any and all characters. One might say that this game could have been extrapolated out into six perfectly fine solo games rather than a single live service multiplayer title, but we can really only speculate on that. On the subject of speculation though, this review comes with the caveat that all reviews of live service games should come with. Marvel's Avengers is subject to change, and while I plan on keeping up with those updates as best I can, there's no guarantee that the game I review here will be recognizable in the next 12 months. And seriously, that might be for the best in this case. 
Marvel's Avengers needs a lot of work to put it in a state where I could happily recommend it to folks, but I think there's potential, especially if its myriad of bugs can be ironed out and each new free character manages to be as fun and interesting as the current roster is. With all of that said, Marvel's Avengers is mediocre. In its launch state, Marvel's Avengers is buggy, rough around the edges, and features some truly heinous monetization practices, but underneath all of that, there is a lot of fun to be had. Its story is entertaining and full of heart, and the gameplay features a surprising amount of depth for anyone who goes looking for it. But I can't in good conscience make a recommendation for the game at this stage, even though I'm keen to jump back onto it as soon as I have the chance. At the end of the day, I suppose it's a pretty typical live service game. Give it a few months, and we'll see if it sinks or swims. Marvel's Avengers is available for Xbox One, PS4, and PC.